My beloved brothers and sisters, we claim to believe, we say we are believers. When a person says he's a Muslim, it means he or she surrenders to the law of Allah. That's the meaning of the term Muslim. I have surrendered to the law of Allah. I am a person who believes and adopts what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down. When a person says he is a mu'min, it means within his heart, he firmly believes in everything that Allah has told us regarding the unseen more than anything else. So if you were to look at the pillars of Islam, you will find five pillars. You will find the statement, the utterance of the Shahada, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the final messenger or prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you have the five daily prayers. That is something that you will fulfill. They are actions. You have, for example, the fasting in the month of Ramadan. You stay away from food. People can see that you're not eating. Then you have the alms to the poor or the charity, the zakah. People can see that you're giving. Then you have the pilgrimage, لِمَنِ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا The pilgrimage to Mecca for the one who is able and capable to fulfill the journey and several other conditions and those are the pillars of Islam. As you notice, people can see this person is a Muslim. They have submitted to Allah. But whether or not they are mu'min and whether or not the belief has penetrated the heart is something that only Allah knows. So if a person says, I believe in Allah, it's up to Allah. Allah knows whether the person is being truthful or false. So Allah says, I will test you in order to determine whether you truly believe or you don't. think that it is sufficient for them to say we are believers as in mu'mineen, iman, and we will not test them. We have tested those before them as well, Allah says. Everyone is going to be tested. So iman, if you look at the pillars of iman, there are six. What are they? Amantu billahi, wa malaikatihi, wa kutubihi, wa rusulihi, wa yawmil akhiri, wa qadam, khayrihi wa sharrihi min Allahi ta'ala. Some might add well, ba'ath and ba'ath means the resurrection and yawmil akhir means the last day. Many of the scholars have brought that together and made it six points. So let me quickly say them again. We believe in Allah. We believe in all the angels. We believe in all the prophets. We believe in all the books. We believe in the last day and the day of resurrection. And we believe that good and bad fate comes from Allah. All of these are within the heart. Nobody can just look at someone and say, you're a believer. In actual fact, Allah alone knows if a person is a believer. Now we have several instructions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only in the Quran, but even through the blessed lips of the noble prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Instructions wherein Allah says, if you believe in Allah, you will do the following. It's a sign that you believe. So there are certain signs that will prove that you truly are a believer. Number one is you are concerned about the meeting with Allah. You are worried about the day you're going to meet with Allah. You're preparing for that day by doing lots and lots of good deeds and abstaining from prohibitions and fulfilling the obligations that Allah has placed on your shoulders. Primarily, that in a nutshell is the most important aspect that shows that the person is a believer, subhanAllah. So let me read for you the verse at the end of Surah Al-Kahf. Allah says, so whosoever is looking forward to the meeting with Allah. What is that meeting? That meeting is actually at the end of time, the last day in the hereafter, after you've died. The day that you will meet with Allah, whoever is looking forward to that meeting, they will do some things from now. 
If I were to tell you, my brothers and sisters, you have a very important meeting with a very important person, you'll be excited. Wow. Think of an important person that you'd really like to meet. What would you do to meet that person? You would prepare. You would make sure that you know what to say. You would make sure you perhaps, you know, go in, a, in the right way and so on and so forth. Especially if they happen to be of leadership in this world. What about Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal? You need to take something. What is it that you're going to take when you meet with Allah? فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Allah makes mention of two things. Both of them are equally important with one of them being very, very serious. Allah says, if you really are looking forward to meeting with Allah, you will do good deeds. What's the meaning of good deeds? الْعَمَلْ الصَّالِحْ the deeds that are acceptable, that are good. A good deed is a deed that was done by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and taught by him. That's a good deed. Because Allah wants you to worship him. You and I would never know how to worship Allah on our own. So Allah sent us messengers to show us how he wants to be worshipped. Amazing. What was the mission of the messengers? Primarily to show us how Allah wants to be worshipped, to remind us about who is Allah and then tell us, now I'm going to show you what he wants from you. So that's why we have five daily prayers. They are not just three or two or seven or eight. They are five. Who told me they are five? Allah. Through whom? Through the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So I know that these are five daily prayers. How do I know I need to start the prayer in this way? I need to do this in the prayer. I need to say this and read this and I need to end it in a specific way. I can only know that through the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I cannot think it up on my own. Therefore, there is no act of acceptable or there is no acceptable act of worship if it were not taught or done by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Hence, the term innovation comes into play. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. No matter what I am to do, if it was not taught by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, it cannot be an act of worship for Allah. Some people go out and they wave at the sun. You can wave at it for 20 minutes and say, I worshipped Allah. That's not an act of worship. Waving at the sun was not taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. If you were to jump up and down 20 times on the spot and say Allahu Akbar each time you jump, is that really a salah? Is it really an act of worship? The answer is no. فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا a salih is that which was taught by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as simple as that. Let's move on to the next point, which is even more serious. Allah says, وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا If you are really looking forward to the meeting with your maker, you will never associate partnership in worship with your own maker, subhanAllah. You will never associate partnership with your maker in worship. I will worship Allah and I will worship Allah alone. That's how it should be and that's how it is. So therefore, any act of worship rendered for anyone or anything besides Allah, Allah says such a person is not looking forward to meeting with me, but perhaps they are looking forward to meeting with others. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope and the same applies to all of us jazakumullah khair assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh